Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. If you don't know our host, David Ham, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jack man. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest from the racing world with their stories, their paths, their Their racing racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube channel. Also on JerseyCapeYachts.com. Check out my website, dhamiam.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe, turn on the bell notification, so you'll be notified every time we go live. Now here's our host, David Ham. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Racing Roots with Ham. And tonight, my guest is Eric Yunt. I'm sorry, Eddie. Why did I say Eric? My goodness, I'm sorry about that. And uh, Derek, because I was looking at Derek Colson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, And then, of course, Phil Cavalli's over here as always so how you guys doing this evening doing real good yeah kind of tired but doing good sure man you were ahead a full day of work yeah all right yeah yeah well it's good to see you and i i, I remember your face i remember seeing you somewhere or another because you know how it is in nascar you see oh, yeah. a thousand people every week it seems like yeah and then uh and then but it's good to finally uh to see you after all these years too when did you when did you start stop going to the racetrack i stopped in uh 1997 okay 97 because that was uh my i started going in 95 yeah so i would have been you know two years in so that's probably assuming when i saw you back then which car were you with then daryl walter okay yeah Mm -hmm. yeah he was right there hickory motor speedway so uh uh, we probably crossed paths there several times yeah and uh we've done a lot of tests and stuff there as well sure so if you saw there uh, the thumbnail picture, I know most everybody saw that. That's uh, Tracy's dad, um, KT is what most people call him, I guess. Kenny Thompson. Kenny Thompson, yeah. And because y'all worked together too. Yeah, one back of the best the best fabricators ever ever been in NASCAR. Mm-hmm. But, uh, very fortunate to work with him. Yeah, how cool is that? I know Tracy's proud mm-hmm. of her dad, and maybe he's watching tonight. I don't know. I tried to. Uh, I was sending the the link to Jackie. Mm-hmm. his wife and um and him and i know tracy sent it to her as well so we'll see at some point or another they'll, they'll see it they'll get to see the show yeah yeah so eddie hunt so i was asking you on the phone the other day has anybody ever called you eddie to hunt because that's very close yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they have yes they've sure. asked me if that's who i am and I yeah like, no you're like right. spelled different right yeah just a little bit it's got that duh in the front of it yeah <laughs> and uh so we brought our good friend Derek here yeah yeah so he's Derek's uh he's my cousin and uh yeah I was telling telling you guys earlier um Eddie's grandmother and my grandfather were brother and sister so Mm -hmm. we I've known Eddie all my life um grew up same hometown together Claremont yeah and um there's a few other good names that come out of Claremont too in NASCAR too so yeah the Richard Huffmans, Brown. Yeah, Richard Brown. Huffman, the Bum Goners. Okay. Uh, the Millers. Yeah. They yeah. raced on local level, uh, mostly yeah. at Hickory. Would that have been Mike Bum uh, Garner? Or no? Tim. Uh, actually, Tim Bum Garner. Okay. Tim Bum Garner, Wayne Bum Garner, yeah. Rick Bum Garner. Hmm. Uh, there was a, a clan of them down there in the in the Claremont that loved racing. And Mm-hmm. He's actually Wayne Bumgarner, a.k.a. Jabbo. He's the first one that got me a job with the Mach 1 Skull team back in the mid-'80s. Okay. It just just because we knew each other. Yeah. It, so so you were talking – we, we talked on the phone for over an hour, but um, mm-hmm. so we kind of went through your, your history and your, your story and racing. So where were you, like, born and raised and, and – so start from the very beginning, because I know you also said and uh, you got into NASCAR around 1979, but mm-hmm. before that you used to always go when you would go on the way to the beach. Yeah, that was uh, – racing's kind of been in our family my, my whole life. My mother's oldest sister, Emma Jean Jarrett, she married Ned Jarrett's oldest brother, Jim Jarrett. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it didn't matter if it was a family reunion over at – 
our grandparents' house or a trip to the beach, wherever we found the race, that's where we stopped and ate lunch and listened to the race because uh, obviously then it wasn't televised and AM radio is about the only place you could find it. Mm -hmm. And you had to be in a certain spot on yeah. Highway 9 to find it, you know. So Yeah. But, yeah, that's, that's uh, one of many ways we we – watched and listened to racing uh my father he he used to take us up to hickory motor speedway claremont's only a few miles from hickory motor speedway so uh the jarrett's were actually a part owner i think at one time of hickory back when it was dirt before they paved it okay and then ned later on was promoter of hickory yeah. when it was paved and he promoted metrolina at the same time uh I think it was in the 70s 70s yeah yeah and metro line at that time was dirt um so then he was promoting both racetracks oh that's cool i always think whenever i think about going to the beach whenever i was a kid we would stop off at the joe weatherly museum yeah there at darlington yeah that's whenever you were talking about going to the beach and making stops that was a cool place to go yeah i think that's called the nmpa museum now nmpa no. NMPA National Motorsports Press Association, which I'm a member, 28 years. Oh, you are, yeah. yeah. I guess you would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was talking about it last week that uh, they had the racing R Richard Petty Racing Simulator in there. Yes, and I remember sitting in that when I was a kid. It was a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that 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 place was free to walk into. Yeah, you could just do a donation. I think mm -hmm. if you remember that they That's, had that little table there at the front when you yep, walked in, yep. you just donated, yep. and it, you could walk through the whole museum. And they had that simulator in it, like you were talking mm -hmm. about. Um, we we stopped there many a time I've on our there. way yeah. to the beach. Yeah. Uh, those little picnic tables underneath those little uh, covers, little covered sheds right there. Yeah. We had many a lunch <laughs> there. That's for sure on our way to the beach. How about that, that was high. That was um, that was high technology back in the day. And, and and every picnic table <laughs> had a little path yeah. off back into the woods where you could go relieve yourself. Oh yeah, because <laughs> there were like I say, it was, there it was up the hill yeah. to the back side of the front stretch grandstands. Then, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, uh, that's cool. That's a lot of history in that place. So, um, all right. So tell us your, you were how did you first get involved in racing? I mean, of course, you were friends with the Jarrett family. I yeah, so. I, I was I was uh, about. 14, 15 years old, my father gave me a 59 Ford, and uh, there was a man who lived across the street from me named Eddie Ward, and uh, he built drag cars and hot rods for the street, but mainly he, he his hobby was building drag cars. And so he helped me get that old Ford running, and that was my first car when I turned 16. And um, there was a local body shop my cousin Marvin Little owned that was kind of a hangout, you know, for the guys and stuff after hours. And I just started wiping Bondo and spraying primer and stuff like that. And uh, Eddie Ward needed a car painted. Well, I'd never painted a car as an old Dodge, and I'd never painted a car before. And he gave me the confidence. He said, I don't care what it looks like, just paint it. So I painted it. Well, our paths went separate ways, and I didn't see him for pro probably about 15, 18 years. And uh, he passed away two years ago, but before he passed away, we got in touch with each other and got to bond and talk about the old times. And uh, he told me that he saw that lady he sold that Dodge to a couple months earlier, and he said it still looked like it did back when we shot it in the uh, Wow. I think it would have been in 78, 77, somewhere around in there. Okay. Wow, so that uh, the paint job lasted. The paint job lasted, yes. and, and as the first one. And I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't have enough confidence to do it because all I had shot was primer. Okay. And I didn't want you know mess up a whole car for somebody. A little spot of primer is easy to fix, but uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you mess up, you run, put runs in the whole car, or don't get the paint wet enough, and it's just not a good job. Yeah, so you didn't really know, I mean, was that your, what you enjoy doing was the paint and body type work? I mean, like no. when I started NASCAR, I was like, I could have went into the car side, engine no, side, I whatever. Was more, but, I was more into the motors, the engine, transmission, mm -hmm. the drivetrain, uh, 
the chrome the chrome wheels yeah the chrome air cleaners the, yeah. i mean this you know stuff like that mm. the you change, like the chrome changing carburetors <laughs> putting two, two fours on you know and yeah. st stuff like that you mm -hmm. know and beefing them up and uh we had a little old shack right behind mom and dad's house and uh that's where we've we've put quite a few motors together changed many axles in that little old shack and uh uh there was a big oak tree out behind and that was our engine hoist that was our engine hoist yeah yep. <laughs> uh, for me and quite a few of my friends it yeah. i say you like the chrome because i know you told me about that that chrome 17 that you put the wrap on yeah that was that's uh, fast forward <laughs> but yeah that's that's uh that was later on in the in the mid to late mm -hmm. 90s that was uh for Darrell Waltrip's 25th anniversary yeah. uh we did uh cool car I think about five or six throwback you know for that but Budweiser and 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 Mountain Dew and Pepsi and uh of course the chrome car yeah. Oh yeah, uh, which was always a joy to photograph on a sunny day. <laughs> oh, I bet. Sure. I bet. <laughs> that chrome car is one oh, of a kind. Oh, that chrome, man. yeah, that was one of a kind. Yeah, sure. That yeah. was a that was a uh, an experience, and I, I, that's all I can say. I, I'd put many decals on in racing, you know, and I'd put the bandit on the hood for the skull bandit and all mm -hmm. the you know contingency decals and stuff like that. And, yeah. In my mind, I just thought it's one big decal. How hard can it be? Well, it was pretty hard. Sure. Because when you went to stretch that chrome around any round radius, it turned powder white. Oh. So you'd have to cut that piece off and section another piece in. Yeah. Uh, Ten foot away, it didn't look that great. Thirty foot away, it, you couldn't see none of the seams. Yeah. But now they've come a long way. They do... Uh, they wrap complete sides with the contingency decal, the driver's names above the door, the door number, the sponsors. That's all on one piece of vinyl now. Okay. Yeah, because nowadays it's not like you you actually have to, I mean, you paint the whole car. You just. No, we don't paint no cars. Right. At Joe Gibbs Racing, we don't paint any cars. Mm -hmm. Well, there are cars painted. It's actually a Exalta being a paint sponsor. Mm -hmm. Exalta replaced DuPont, so I know the Hendrick has to paint them. Uh, As a matter of fact, the haulers, uh, two years ago, they had to paint the haulers at a last-minute request because my neighbor, Chris, And I could see them. that. Yeah, that makes sure, sense. because paint sponsor, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. They actually have a, a training center over there that exalts the sponsors where they can paint and dry a car in four hours. That's yeah, to booth. Yeah, that's, yeah. In, in this day and time, that's, that's picking up the sure. pace pretty good. Sure, hmm. yeah. Yeah, um, Kenny Thompson is watching, and he says hello you say you tell ten ken thompson i said hello and thanks for all he's done for me yeah very cool said uh get you to i was i was asking tracy i said i should try to get him to call in but i don't know maybe he'll do maybe that. he will <laughs> so he was always yeah. called the total package because he could do anything oh yeah and that was his nickname around the shop was the total package all right that's cool because i know he worked at uh home and moody in the 60s oh yeah yeah and then he went to work for Ford up in Michigan. Yeah. And then come back and was building hitters and for NASCAR and or for all the teams. Yeah. I think he doesn't he's he, he's done a lot of headers for the Yates deal hmm. there in a certain period, but I'm sure he expanded out after that. Yeah. But Maybe I can get him to come in and tell his story sometime. That would be priceless. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's got them. Sure. Yeah. So and and I know that um Norman Kazumishi was a good friend of his. A good friend of mine. We could mm -hmm. call him the mayor. The and, mayor, uh, that's right. Uh, yeah. He drove many a truck. Uh, I was with him, not with him, but was there when he turned that hauler over in uh, Watkins Glen. Mm -hmm. He's come down a hill too quick and made a hard right-hand turn. It just flopped over on the side. Oh, yeah. But I remember helping him get out. He was uh, he was ready to get back because that's the way that way the way they rolled back then, especially. Yeah. Um, I know I saw a picture on one of the Facebook groups, and you were probably commenting on this too. But it was the it was one of the trucks, maybe it was the maybe it was Daryl Walter's old truck, one of those. And they were talking about it having a big horn in it, of course. Yeah. And then um, maybe yeah. a special button or something too. Henry Benfield yeah. always kept that big train horn on yeah. about every hauler he had. Sure. And. Uh, 
he would light you up with it too when you least expected it. <laughs> piccolo player, <laughs> right? Piccolo player. <laughs> I called him one night for my show, but he was up in uh, Virginia or West Virginia yeah, or somewhere. Somewhere on the road in the middle of traffic. <laughs> he, he thought it was a prank phone call at first. <laughs> yes. He couldn't hardly hear too, I guess. It was like, yeah. it sounded like he had some jackhammers going off in the background or something. Yeah. There's no telling about it. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Chattanooga. That's where he yeah. was. Chattanooga. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He says. So, yeah. Uh, good morning or good evening to uh, Rachel Rodman down in Charlotte. Mike Bear and Mayor DH and Jane. Uh, Ch- Chad Hyder. There you go. Ch- up in Ohio. Ch- Ch- Chad Hyder. Yes. We've also got Cameron Bartley on. We've got uh, Sandy Lee Tingley. We have uh, Dickie Dennis, Don Clark, Wayne Puglise, the big guy Wayne Puglise up there at Jersey Cape Yachts, one of our big sponsors. Jerry Haynes, anticipation. He's been waiting. Jerry Haynes. Linda Jenks, Jody Brooks, uh, Chad Hyder, Brett Troutman. The Troutmans are in the house. Major D.H., who's that? I don't know. I haven't seen him on here before. I don't know, but he's here for you, Eddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt it's Denny Hamlin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, really? There you that go. would be private DH. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, no Linda Jinks. <laughs> yeah. The whole Troutman family there here in Statesville. Mm-hmm. Thank you all for tuning in. And we'll do the prize wheel here towards the end of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But for now, we're talking to Eddie Yunt. And it's spelled Y-O-U-N-T, but it's, it's like punt, but spelled different. Yeah. Right. Some people call it Yount. My family goes by Yunt. Yeah. And uh, uh, the original gang of us come over here was Y-O-U-N-T-Z, Yunts. Oh. And, uh, is that like German? Yeah, it is. Something yep. like it. Yeah. Plural. Yeah. Yunts. Yeah. Is plural? Z is plural in German. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I've, I've heard people call that last name Yunts also. Yeah. Y-O-U-N-T-Z, Yunts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've heard that also. Yeah. So. Well, and I, I was texting with you and messaging with you, and I said that to my wife, and she said, you better ask him how to say his, na- his last name because it looked like, because I was saying Yount. And yeah. she said, I work with somebody, and it said, it's, said, it's Yount. So, yeah. uh, but you work at, at Joe Gibbs Racing, and um, so I was asking you about my special helmet to get signed. I've had that helmet since 1970-something, and uh, so I think he's going to hook me up with that. Is That'd that be really a, cool. a Washington football team helmet? Yeah, the football team. <laughs> it's the football. <laughs> Not yeah. a racing helmet. Then. It's a burgundy football yeah. team helmet. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. So what I did, I'll just tell on myself, I had, um, it's got a bunch of scratches on the front. And so, you know, I always watch football and, and them guys that were tough. And so I took it out to the road and kind of, <laughs> <laughs> this is many, many years ago. Yeah. And me and my brother would just put our, put our helmets on. He put on his Oakland Raiders and then we would just get head to head and just go at it. You got to look the part. And then yeah. that was, yes. That's kind of like you guys are old enough to like me. You'll remember this. That was the days of vampire blood. Yeah. Yeah. Remember vampire yeah. blood? You yeah. get it. it was yeah. a tube of it that was like red jelly i do remember that <laughs> yeah. yes that's yeah, that, true yeah but we use ketchup packs and and whenever i would be in a karate movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> uh, yeah. that's good stuff yeah i guess you could say that helmet could be from the hogs right the hogs from the time of the hogs. yeah right? absolutely that was yeah. what the yeah uh john regan's we were talking about some of the yeah. old football players the yeah one. it's uh coach has had uh several of his old players come in there and Doug Williams and Riggins and, and a few others. And, uh, uh, I was cool. fortunate enough to get me a Washington football team helmet before the logo changed yeah. and yeah. coach signed it for me. And wow. That's, he, that's pretty awesome. I think. I, yeah. You know, he, like, yeah, it is. To, he's to, such to a guess. humble man. He's, yeah. He's yeah. put, he's in two hall of fames. Very few people say that. Yeah. But in two totally different sports, I mean, sure. yeah. right? Yeah, he's a leader, and it, yeah. it his his win record shows in anything he does. Yeah, uh, and he's yeah. very approachable. If you ever see him in public, and he serves the Lord well. Yes, he's always speaks the word of the Lord. Yeah, Anybody wants to come up to him, he'll give you a little brochure, you yeah. know, with information and contact. 
Yeah, I'll I mean, have to say that yeah. I'm I'm closer to God now than I've ever been in yeah. my life. Yeah. And you still work there now, yeah. actively. Yeah, yeah I'm, so. I'm, I'm I'm still. Yep. I'm still pulling five, that's, six days a week. That's and, tenure uh, there, and that's how long have you been active at Joe Gibbs Race? Uh, ten, ten years in September. Yeah. yeah, that's great. We've got uh, since I've been there, we've got 104 wins. Mm. Uh, just, just at Joe Gibbs. And and what uh, do you, you have? How many championship rings, Eddie? I've got 14. 14. Gosh, and that's over. Well, and that's not championship rings, but that's crown event and championship okay. rings. And, what crown events are they? Uh, Indy, uh, the All Star. Uh, I got a Bush Class ring. Uh, Daytona 500. Daytona right. 500. Coca Cola 600. Uh, I thought they were going to do one for Darlington, but it never it never come to pass. Yeah. Being Darlington has the history well, that it has. That, well, actually, it'll, twenty years from now, it'll be a retro ring. <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> like everything else started yeah, turning right. a retro. Yeah, I, I never did get a um, a Charlotte ring. I don't know that they do the Char Charlotte anymore, do they? For the six hundred, they don't. I think they do the six hundred, but they quit doing the All Star. Okay, right. Because I've got a couple sweep rings where we won the oh. All Star race and the six hundred, mm -hmm. and uh, you get a sweep ring. Yeah, as well. That'd be pretty neat to have. But uh, I've got uh, yeah. five Bristol swords. Uh, one of them is mm. when Kyle Busch pulled off the trifecta and won all three races, and mm. that's probably one of the most prized possessions I have. That sure. I, I got the whole team to autograph the sword and put it up for my boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's very cool. Uh, Richard Bostick sent me a text and he says, ask Eddie about the cam camera. Well, it says camera, but I'm going to say it's cambered rear ends in the 33 car with Harry Gant. <laughs> ask him what he's going to put you on the spot. <laughs> was it hard to keep axle bearings in? <laughs> I think that's based off a photograph I, that was I, recently I, posted yeah. up, isn't it, Eddie? I don't, I don't know. I don't know that uh, I can, yeah. can, can submit yeah. all that. Statute of limitations. You won't, is, you won't confirm or deny that. I will <laughs> confirm or deny. <laughs> I know, right? That one I hear a lot about. We get that question and about the the big engine and and uh, well and and then the one about the blow up with DW at the finish line and all this yeah. stuff, you know. Uh, DW told me because see <laughs> I I was with Harry Gant when that happened, mm -hmm. and that's who he beat. And uh, so as I went there to Daryl Walters' shop for him, I ragged on him pretty hard about blowing that motor up, yeah. and he he always said he didn't clutch it. He didn't oh, clutch yeah. it. He said, I didn't clutch it. He okay. said it just exploded. It was his and time. Then, and then if he wanted to get under my skin, yeah. I didn't clutch that motor, just so <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm sure every time he said something about that, he had a good grin on his oh, face. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, and I mean, I'm that's, sure. that's, that, that race was right up there with the Indy race, mm -hmm. the very first Winston race. There's not a soul in racing that didn't want to bring that trophy home. Sure. And uh, there's a lot of hype around that race too yeah it was mm -hmm. really built up yeah and you could see it by the next year when they went to atlanta the yeah. fall off right. and the lack mm -hmm. of interest yeah. yeah and they brought it back to charlotte and it went booming again and yeah yeah mike bear mike bear i saw a video of andy petrie showing that car off with all its modifications man <laughs> so he's already it's already been put out there man. shame on him <laughs> but leave it to andy for that right mm. All right, so uh, <laughs> Steve Knight. Steve Knight's tuned in. And, Steve, I found some old pictures. I was going to show them to Phil, but Phil does not want to see any pictures. Oh, I, <laughs> well, I've seen enough in my career <laughs> so far. Man. You know, <laughs> yes. Pay me, I'll sit there and look yeah. at anything you want. <laughs> so, but when I was at Sabco, and actually Bostic was in them too, and Felix Sabata, Kyle Petty, and Steve Knight was in some, and all, uh, Rick Brakefield. Anyway, I've, they were throwing out some pictures when I was at Sabco after Ganassi was buying into it mm -hmm. and I went and dug it out of the trash can. So I got a stack of pictures and I'm going to post them one of these days. So Steve Knight says, uh, the 33 car went through many rear drive flanges and axles. There you go. Yes, I sure did. Yeah. <laughs> uh all right i won't say why. Yeah. Somebody out here wants to know about the story of you meeting uh, Burt Reynolds while you were a stuntman and a stuntman for Hal Needham. Uh, Stan Barrett? Stan, Stan was the first go driver, right. go bandit, if you will. 
and uh, uh, then Harry came along, and I've I've never done any kind of stunt work or anything like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I've I've met Bert. 10, 15 times that he would come to the racetrack. He didn't come to the racetrack near as much as Hal Needham. Uh, Hal was there just about every week, and mm-hmm. a lot of times Hal Needham was a spotter okay. for Harry. And uh, Harry's had several different spotters, but, you know, that Hal come to the racetrack quite a bit. Did you see Johnny Hayes cool. quite a bit, Eddie? Johnny Hayes. <laughs> he's one of a kind, or was. Mm-hmm. But yeah. he was uh, – he ended up running the U.S. tobacco racing side of it. Yeah. And uh, uh, work with him with Harry and then with Rick Mast and a couple I've, different school deals. Richard and Leo Jackson. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. The Jackson brothers. Yeah, those were great days. See, that's when they split up as Harry and Skull went to uh, Asheville. And Richard kept a shop that Benny Parsons, Phil Parsons. Right. And AJ Foyt run out of in Denver. Mm-hmm. Now we still got our motors from Richard and Leo's engine shop, but uh, there was eleven people on that race team. Mm. Wow! And, and they worked on every component of the car. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. the Copenhagen cars were pretty much out of Denver. Yep. And then the Skull cars were out of Fletcher. Uh, well, the two Skull cars, the three Skull cars were actually out of Denver for many years. Right. The 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 33, the 66, the 55. Yeah. Uh, then it went on to go to be the one car. And then uh, Skull and Leo went and they did their deal. And Travis Carter, he started up a race team by a man named uh, uh, Bill Edwards bought the race team from Hal Needham. And it was still called okay. Mach 1 Racing. And Rick Mass was a driver, number 66 car. So when I hear Johnny Hayes' name, I always think about Steve Blackwell. You know, Crusher. Crusher, Steve I know Crusher very well. Okay. Because yeah. he used to always talk about him. Yeah, yeah. He, it, yeah. Johnny was a one of a kind that he he uh, he could make a joke out of anything, but you, you knew you knew when he was serious. Yeah. And uh, he was a lot of fun to work with. He said he loved everybody. And he, he did. always he, he said, "I love that guy." He, he did. Oh, is that right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So did you ever wonder if he was uh, really for real? I mean, I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> yeah. how some people are always yeah. just saying no, that. He, Wait, he, he was yes. about as genuine as he could get. Yeah. And it, 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 if you'd be around him for 15 minutes, you could. I mean, you just enjoy being around him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. He's a, sounds like a real positive guy. I mean, I say that because we have a guy. Uh, his name's Rocky Lynn. He's like a, a local artist, a hero kind of in the town. But every time he meet, every time he sees you, he's like, "You're gonna do great today. You're awesome," you know, and all this stuff. And I'm like, "Okay, thank you." Yeah, you know, but it's all good. Um, my wife sent me this as uh, Jerry L. Hayes. How many? Oh, it's a question. How many of you know that Coach Gibbs was also a national racquetball champion in 1976? Wow. How about that? I didn't. I don't racquetball know if champion, a track fact or a racquetball yeah. fact, but that's impressive, <laughs> ain't it? That's impressive, yeah. yeah. Multi talented. Hey, uh, did I see uh, Jerry Swites' brother on here? Yeah, that's John. How about that? Uh, that's my high school NBA star. Yeah, he's going to be with me at Caraway Speedway. He lives over there in Florence. He <laughs> coached for Florence and mm-hmm. all over, but he's going to be with me at Caraway Speedway for their opener on the fourteenth. So that's cool. I'd like to meet him sometime. Yeah. I Great worked guy. with old uh, Hard guy. Times, Jerry Swites, <laughs> and uh, yeah. he's always, you know, hey, buddy, can yeah. you do me a favor? Yeah. <laughs> so he asked me to do him a favor one time, and I said, okay, good, buddy. And he's like, don't ever call me that again. <laughs> uh, Jerry's like about six, Trucker seven. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I rode back from uh, Darlington with him one time. And so, of course, you know, anytime you, you get around police officers, you hand them hats out the window, which is cool. But, and and rolls of skull or yeah, that's your yep. ticket to ride. Yes. I was a. Uh, this is about five years ago, and I have a picture because I I doubled back and took a picture. But Tony Stewart's uh, Home Depot hauler was pulled over going. What's the town right outside of Vegas? They always pull you over. That Henderson. No, it's a uh, something slash city. But anyways, it's right outside of Vegas, and they had him pulled over. By the time I doubled back and came back the guy was already running back and he had a stack full of trooper had a stack full of 
hats that, and his, got his oh, car yeah. took off. That's and the only chances reason. Chances are there. that's all he wanted anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Yep. It, Nobody yep. did nothing wrong. He just wanted his hat. Absolutely. He That's wanted to see yeah. all that chrome yeah. on them wheels, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> so Tracy was asking if Eddie, uh, Eddie, if Bert gave him a Rolex also. If Bert gave me a Rolex? Yeah, apparently. N- no. No. Kenny. Okay. No, I, 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 I've, I didn't have a whole lot of involvement with Bert other than just meeting him, shaking his hand, mm-hmm. knowing who he was, and then we were right back to the race car. Yep. Uh, they wouldn't – They never. I never was invited to anything after hours away from the racetrack with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes, I've met him, but I didn't know him like I know my cousin here. Yep. You know, it's, it's – right. it, I didn't know him well enough to get a Rolex. Yeah, <laughs> apparently – uh, uh. If I finish this 10 years out here at Gibbs, though, I will get a watch. Oh, yeah. There you go. So Nice. Uh, it may be a Rolex see. then. Yeah. It may be. Yeah. They give yeah. out Rolexes. Oh, well, yes, sir. Yeah. So, Rachel was asking about um, Joe. How does Joe Gibbs' involvement in faith at the race shop? Which Right now, Joe Gibbs' involvement is very minimal because of his age and this COVID. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, he pretty much has the third floor to himself that nobody goes up there that when he comes down, uh, that's when you'll, that's when you'll see him. You don't have the option to go see him. Mm-hmm. You might can send him a, a email or something like that. But when he comes down on the floor, that's, I think I've seen him maybe six times this year or through yeah. this COVID deal. I right. say this year, but through this COVID deal. Uh, and luckily enough, I, he come down, and uh, was over there at the race car. I was tracking my days. I think it was like Tuesday of last week, and I got a picture of him and the trophy that uh, that uh, Christopher Bell won in Daytona. Yeah, that's that's very cool. Yeah, priceless. He seems like a good kid. I mean, he seems really happy and young. Oh, he is. Joe yeah. Christopher. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, question. Yes, I think second part of that question might be Joe has a ministry something going on all the time at the, yes, at the shop. He, yeah. uh, we have Bible studies every day there except yeah. with the exception of Friday. Okay. Uh, now we have a company wide Bible study where up until this virus come out uh, he w- would have box car to bring in meal for everybody <laughs> buffet every Wednesday and then we would have our Bible study. And uh, I don't know how many years he's been doing that, but it lasted all the way up till they shut us down for this virus. And uh, uh, Wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah he's, I've heard he's very instrumental. He's got in. three full-time ministers that work there. Yeah. That he employs three, three ministers. Is that, Bob still there? Bob is still there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Bob's been around for 30 years in racing. Yeah, I know. I've, I've, I remember meeting Bob for the first time at yeah. the racetrack. When he Max, hasn't aged at all either. Remember Max Helton? Oh, yeah. Sure. Max, Max was our preacher during Sunday. And Ron uh, and Jack, Jackie Pegram. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that's how I met Bob Dyer, is the guy we're talking about. But yep. uh, he's a great human being. He's so, so humble. I can see why him and Coach hit it off. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. So go back to the um, back to the seven when you got involved in racing, and then seventy nine, right? Yes, I started in seventy nine with uh, Derek's uncle, Don Colson, and uh, Ned Combs was the driver. We had a little number ninety seven Monza, and uh, when you sent me a picture of, I yeah. Believe. Yeah, a little silver Monza. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my cousin, Bobby Little, he's the one that he was already on the team as a mechanic. And uh, they had some body work that needed to be done. And so I was trying to get my foot in some kind of door in yeah. some kind of race. And so I, that's the avenue I took and uh, did that for about a year and a half. It wasn't, it wasn't a very long stint. Then I went back drag racing and uh, – Tommy Houston's body man got sick and some of Houston's mechanics were mechanics at Everett Chevrolet 
and uh, they asked me if I would care if I'd paint Tommy's Daytona car. And I said, sure, but I don't have nowhere to paint it, so they let me paint it at Everett Chevrolet. And where was that Chevrolet dealership? It's uh, up off 6470 in Hickory, okay. right across the street, really, from where it's at now. Mm -hmm. uh, they just built a new building and went across the street. But uh, that was... Uh, that was a car that still holds the fastest lap ever turned in a Bush Series car because they put restrictor plates on them. And we went down there, first car I ever painted, did body work on, sell them a pole with it. Yeah, how about that? And uh, still today holds track record. So yeah. that's pretty neat. You know, I know it, it probably is. wouldn't if they wouldn't put the restrictor plates on, but. Uh, that but that was during an era of paint, right? Yeah. Not yeah. a wrap. Oh, which, yeah. You know, yeah, is, I painted. I Like I said, I didn't. Darrell Walter's car in 90, I think 96 or 97, I can't remember what year we did run that chrome car. Uh, but uh, we painted them all the way up. Even Darrell's cars were painted that Western Auto with all the, the different grays that filtered right. back. And then yeah. when Parts America come on, it went to the blues. Yep. That was all paint. And uh, well, So we have a question here, which I think is a great question. And it's kind of a two part question. Major DH asked, what was the hardest car ever to wrap or paint that you ever did? I'd have to say the chrome car yeah. is the hardest one I've ever had to wrap because it, yeah. you you couldn't stretch the vinyl in it. You just yeah, it couldn't. couldn't crease. No winkle it, had to be smooth. Right. It, it had, it, and, and if you stretched it, it would change color. Oh. It would turn a powdery white. Like if you go over the top of the fender and you tried to pull it down tight, and that's what you have to do to wrap a car. You've got to pull that vinyl tight to get the air yeah. out from under and uh, every time you'd wrap it around the corner, it'd stretch to a powdery white. Sure. So we had to just cut pieces and sections. And once we got past the in between the two tires, it wasn't that big of a deal. The roof wasn't that big of a deal, the hoods, but the whole frontal end, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a handful. So yeah, those, those body panels were yeah. rolled at that time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, that would make it even harder. Yeah. You know, just to, each to roll one. it. Because that's many angles. Yeah. All yep. at, at the same time. <clears throat> English wheel. I did. Yes. <laughs> there was a man named Carl Adams, and he bought a real English wheel, a casted English wheel. And uh, he made his own wheels, went to a stage full scrap yard, bought the scrap, made his own wheels. And then it sat there for a year because nobody knew how to use it. So I just started playing with it. Mm -hmm. And when the Lumina come out, that's the first car I ever used an English wheel on was Lumina. Okay. I know that's one of the things uh, Kenny Thompson's really good at. Oh, he's he's a master at moving metal. Yeah. yeah. And his aluminum, aluminum body stuff that he's done. And so we had another question. Well, the second part of that would be what would be the toughest paint job you ever put on a car? The hardest paint, the hardest uh, car to paint, I guess. I never really found yeah. none of them hard. Yeah. I mean, you'd put mm -hmm. a base coat of color on and you'd tape off, you'd tape off whatever you wanted to cover up. And yeah, I never really found it hard. I'd uh, say nowadays, if you had to paint some of them cars that are wrapped, then that would be. Yeah. And uh, these, yeah, and with the wraps, colors. with the wraps nowadays, you can get mm -hmm. so many more different, um, uh, Anything. Paint schemes, yeah. if you will. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Sure. There's so many we, different we colors. There's yeah, so many different colors that can come out on right. the, on the, with those wraps. You would have had to sure. airbrush it back in the 80s and oh, yeah. 90s. Yeah. You know, yeah. right. you yeah. just didn't have that ability. Yeah. Well, it, talking about when you were painting, you know, the, the different colors on the cars, it would be, it would just take longer to paint if it would ha if it had that many so-called stages. Right. You know, where you'd tape off this section right. and paint and then do it all over again all the way until the car was finished. And I was at the body man at Daryl's when when he had that Western Auto car that had all those multiple colors, but it did take a lot longer to, than an average paint job. Sure. Uh, probably the easiest one I ever did was Rick Mass, the number one skull car. Hmm. I did, there was no paint on it. It was black primer and white primer with clear coat on it. Oh, yeah, well, that's easy <laughs> enough, right? Yeah. We'll get this last question and then we'll, we'll continue on with your story. Uh, what do you, what is the, uh, what do you do when you have a wrap and a, a, to correct a wrinkle? You just heat it up. You basically pull the wrap back off. Yeah. yeah. You take your fingers and go up underneath it 
and you worked a wrinkle out. Now I'm, I don't wrap cars at Joe Gibbs racing, yeah. but I do know how to put vinyl on. Right. But if you do get a wrinkle in it, you just pull it back off. You take your fingers and you, where it's stuck together, you open it back up, right. you put the heat to it, and then you squeegee the air back out. Okay. Yeah, heat gun's a good friend on a wrapping, <laughs> well, wrapping a car. And most of our guys use those small torches. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the and little the it, little canister type torch. Yeah, the yep. little. Yep. Yeah. All right, so you're at the Chevrolet dealership. Y'all paint that car. Yeah, yeah we, we paint the car. Uh, I go to open up the trunk lid, and I use my knife because this is back when the trunk lids actually had a hole where the, the key lock went in the trunk oh, lid. Mm-hmm. So the whole car was painted white, and so I wanted to let it air out. And this was about 2 o'clock in the morning, so I stuck my pocket knife in there, and pocket knife closed down on my finger, so oh. I had to go get 12 stitches at, oh. later on that, that mm, evening. Yeah. So that was a full day. <laughs> so as if you didn't already remember that night, and then that just solidified it for you. Oh, oh yeah. And <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that was, that was mm-hmm. a long day. So then they figured out you could do that, that kind of job. And then it just continued on. Well, what happened was we had wrecked Tommy Houston had wrecked and hit the wall at Charlotte and I'm still full time at Everett Chevrolet and I'd bought a place about a mile away from Tommy's house. So it wouldn't be such a drive late yeah. of a night cause we'd stay over all hours of the night. And, uh, Tommy had hit the wall and hurt the car really bad. So Robert Black was running the uh, Bush series back then. So he allowed us to take the car back to Tommy's shop to fix it. So while they were bringing the car back, I went to Everett Chevrolet and got the damage dozer. That's a frame machine. Mm -hmm. And I hooked it all up and pulled the frame back around. We'd cut the whole side off of it, uh, beat the side out, welded the same side back on put duct tape on it, spray bomb where we needed to, and took it back to the racetrack. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we finished sixth that that day. Mm -hmm. So his effort were well worth it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a man there that I I called out a while ago, Wayne Bumgarner. He was friends with Tommy. They had uh, been racing forever. Uh, Bobby Isaac is Wayne Bumgarner's uncle. Okay. So but Wayne's Mm -hmm. mama and Bobby were brother and sister. So... Mm -hmm. Wayne's been in racing, Jabo, he's been in racing for a long time as well. Mm-hmm. Well, he went and told Travis Carter that it's a guy I might want to talk to. And so next Monday morning I got a phone call and it was Travis Carter. He called me at Everett Chevrolet. Mm-hmm. And uh, cool. I worked a two-week notice and started racing. Yeah. I guess that was an exciting phone call. It was. I, 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 at first I really didn't think it was him. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, he and told me, he started spitting out some names and then I knew yeah. Yeah. I knew it was him. Yeah. So that was, uh, you were, uh, went to work for, did you go work for Tommy Houston? Never full time. Okay. I was always part time for Tommy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. First full time job was with KT and, mm-hmm. and the Skull Car. Okay. You, you enjoyed some pretty good success with Tommy, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, oh, yeah. That short little bit of time. Oh, yeah. We, we, we went to Victor Lane, I think, seven times in that year, year and a half, two wow. years. Mm-hmm. And, wow. uh, that's cool. I uh, I called Andy and left him a message because uh, Gene Hammett, I think, had yeah. sent me that. Yeah. And he's watching now too. Yeah. Gene is. Yeah. Uh, Gene Gene and I go way back. We're we're we've been together since fourth grade. Oh wow. In elementary school. So. Yeah. <clears throat> you in, he lived you, right. At, I'm sorry. Were you in the same grade with uh, Brian? Your brother Brian. Br- Brian. He was he was one year ahead of me. Okay. Rob well, we Huffman. grew up together. Robert was with us. Yeah. yeah Robert was with us. So yeah. Robert's a, he's another local guy that. Yeah, Robert Huffman, he's a multi-time dash champion. Mm. Um, and, and speaking of the, the, the 97 car that Ned drove, that that uh, Monza that Eddie was talking mm. about, yep. that was a super speedway car. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, su- you had a short track car, that little Pontiac Aster. Yeah. Uh, it was it, it, same thing as a Chevrolet Vega. Okay. But it was a Pontiac Aster. Mm-hmm. And um, raced that car too somewhat. And I think um, – uh, Ned won a uh, hundred lap race at Hickory one time in that Aster, that Pontiac Aster, and uh, they they you know they they ran a lot of times. Uh, no, we run we run Wilkesboro with that oh, little yeah. '97 car. Yeah, <laughs> well they they go to all the big tracks: yeah. uh, Rockingham, Darlington, Atlanta, yeah, Daytona, 
uh, they were it was the dash series then was just a support you know race for the for the cup series on sunday it's yeah and it was yeah. it was a support series for the bush series exactly which was a support series for the yep. cup series yep sure was yeah the baby grands they called it yeah. then yeah baby grands yeah yeah, they four in, cylinder. In my mind, I still want to call them dash cars, but yeah, they're they're sure. they're well, they were called baby grands. I think that was the name that stuck with it longest was the Goodies Dash Series. Yeah, uh, that yep. was that was the name that it, that they kept the longest. So. How about that? That's cool. Steve Knight says Tex Powell. <clears throat> I think y'all know Tex Powell mm -hmm. has the original cast iron English wheel from Holman and Moody. Ooh, wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. That's a gem. piece to have. Yeah, that's a gem. Yeah. I'm sure. All right, so continue with your story. Okay, and uh, so I, like I say, I go on and I, I work with Travis. We do a couple years with Skull, and Skull and Harry decides to go to Asheville and go their way. So I wasn't real sure about the longevity of this new car owner coming in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I left and I went with Ricky Rudd and uh, stayed over there for – three quarters of a year probably and uh decided i wanted to go back to work for travis and and so i went back with rick mast and travis and i worked I, off and on i think i counted up 13 years if you go through the the school days molly black gold days banquet kmart um, national guard discovery we he worked here in states for for probably six or eight years i worked with him here in states yeah was that written uh ricky red had his own team when you went with him no uh that was when kenny bernstein moved up from traveler's rest south carolina to yeah. huntersville okay it's a it's a little little small building i actually helped them finish hanging the wall inside mm -hmm. they were building it uh the building wasn't built for a race shop but kenny bought it and turned it into a race shop i okay. guess that would have been the 26 quaker state car mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep. yeah there you go yeah uh, Bernstein was still in his uh, funny car at that time. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. Budweiser funny car. Yeah. You know, we were talking about Steve Kinzer a couple of weeks ago, I think. We were talking, about, sorry, talking about some of the, the drivers that got into NASCAR but didn't quite, couldn't, you know, thought they were yeah. going to do good, but just wasn't the same type of racing for them. Yeah. And, and it's, you can't take nothing away from Steve. It's just uh, it's kind of the same way with Butch Miller. You know, he owned that ASA series. Yeah. The, the races that man won, uh, he is very, very knowledgeable about a race car. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the smartest guys I've ever worked with about it, it actually knew, you know, I need some camera taken out. I need some more caster in the right front or my t shock mm -hmm. got too much rebound. Yeah. But, uh, he was very, very car smart. All right. And, uh, but uh, that turned into uh, Spencer, Jimmy Spencer, come in. And I stayed there till they closed the doors. And uh, that's normally the way I would do. I'd stay as long as they kept the doors open, I'd stay. Yeah. And uh, so then that's when I went with the Rick Mast Skull Car and uh, did about five years. I'll have to say Rick Mast was probably one of the funnest drivers I've ever worked with. Sure. He was absolute a hoot. What year was that you went to work for him? Uh, it would have been 91, 2, 92, because okay. Molly Black Gold pulled out mid-season. Okay. And uh, and so mm -hmm. when Travis had – he had no choice but shut the team down. So you were talking about um, Indianapolis race. Didn't he get the – was it the first pole? Yeah. Rick, Rick okay. got the first pole. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'll never you were, forget. You were part we of that team, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. I'll come back. We'll come back. I think it was from Michigan. One of the few tracks we got to fly from, and that's why I say we, we got back pretty early and we started pulling some measurements on the car and it really didn't, wasn't what we thought it was going to be. So mm -hmm. we put, put some pretty major wholesale changes on the car uh, that, that night, Sunday night, when we got home. Mm -hmm. And the next week, obviously, we're racing the first race at Indy, so we wanted our stuff ready. Uh, we had A.J. Foyt on our team, and we did some testing, and A.J. helped Rick learn how to get around that place quicker than – a lot of drivers had to learn how to get around it by themselves. Yeah. But he – you know, A.J. had spent a many a lap up there in them Indy cars. And, oh, yeah. 
He knew how to get around there, and it showed. Hmm. It showed. So you, you were saying you made a bunch of changes on that one car? Yeah. That, yeah. that was body-wise, correct? Body-wise, yeah. Yeah, and so it it had to fit templates then yep. also, didn't it? Yep. Yeah. That's that's pretty big undertaking to do all that, it, that close to the to the race, and then you sit on the pole. That's but pretty big. Then it's just it's – just, it's different then. It was just – We'd raced all day and come home and found a problem and we weren't going to go home till we fixed it. Oh, yeah. Especially with that, the biggest race that we've seen in NASCAR in a long time was an inaugural Indy 400. And, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you guys want a brand new van? Got a van out of yeah, that deal. I remember that it was got a, a huge boat. Deal. Got a, oh, yeah. got a boat out of it. And did you lead the first lap? Yep. Yeah, because I remember yep. Earnhardt was pissed because he hit the wall because he Let's was see. determined to try to lead the first lap. <laughs> him, him and Rick had already had a discussion, and Rick pretty much told him what was going to happen. If you know <laughs> you're going to be on the outside, <laughs> and I'm planning on leading this first uh, yeah. lap. And I think Earnhardt was ticked off enough that he didn't get the pole. Well, I think it. Yeah, sure. he he was because he was second. He started second. But I really think that first mm -hmm. lap cost him the first win there. He yeah. was the yeah. fast. He was mm -hmm. fastest overall. Yeah, because sure. the very he, he won. He popped a wall, and I think it bent the truck arm. And yeah, it, oh yeah, he, he didn't he didn't run as good as he had been most of the weekend. Mm -hmm. That was coming out of four. Yeah, and, and had, I'm sure he didn't lift. Wall. Yeah, oh, I'm sure he did. N no. Neither one of them did. No. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> That, that was uh, <laughs> that was a fun part. That was a fun part of my career, uh, and they they treated us nice. Uh, they rented the whole Lake Lure Inn for mm. a Christmas party. Uh, we got leather coats. I got a, I think I got a Bush Class ring out of that. I got a watch mm. out of it. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they were, Rick made every one of us a a life size identical trophy to what he got his mm. Bush. His Bush Pole Trophy. Yeah, had the speed. Yeah. Had our, each one of us has got our name on it. Uh, but that was some good times. What's the name of that movie they filmed there? And so right after that, they said, "You know what? That place is so cool. We're going to do Dirty Dancing yeah. here." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. And, uh, and you know, Rick Rick had the pretty much the same start as as a lot of others. Just local, just a local short track. Yeah, where he grew up. You know. Rick, went from there. Rick traded a cow for his first race car. Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> I mean that's 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 how bad yeah. he wanted to race. He didn't have the money. Yeah. But he had the he had he had the he had the beef. Yeah. Well he had the drive. He just had he, just, he wanted Where's to do beef? it. He wanted to be good. And, and, and what he did. It's so sad that he got carbon monoxide poisoning the way yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah. Because and I know we gassed him one time real bad at Bristol. They used to have these things called sucker ducks. Instead of air going in the car, it sucks it out. Mm -hmm. And we were sucking air right up out of Everything. off the exhaust pipe, yeah. right into the car. And uh, wow. he had to have oxygen. Yeah. That was his, I don't know if that was the first time he got gassed, but that was the first time he got carbon okay. real bad. Yeah, that was, I had gotten a call to come, let's see, I'm trying to remember, 97, 98, something like that, to possibly go work for that team. Hmm. But, and then I saw him, he was hanging out over at Sabco some around that time. Yeah, he switched after that. Mm -hmm. they, um, Skull pulled out, obviously, because of government issues. Yeah. And uh, Hooters came on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could kind of see the writing in the, you know, you can tell when things are getting tough on teams. So that's when I left and went to Waltrips. Okay, yeah. And um, well, what was tough about having Hooters on board? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. a tough one there, man. You get you get to go <laughs> eat. Not necessarily <laughs> having them free. on board, but uh, yeah. watching watching the lack of funding was sure. Yeah, was, sure. Yeah. We got a question uh, or a comment from uh, Daniel Thompson. Yeah. Well, yeah, Dan yeah, Thompson. That's Dan. That's 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 Ken Thompson, the total package's son. Yeah. There you go. He and says he, Kenny learned it on the original English wheel at the HM and with Luigi. Yes. Yeah, home and Moody with Luigi. Yeah. Yep, he's a legend. And what's up, Dan? That's my brother in law. Yeah. 
he's my brother-in-law. <laughs> he's not from Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> Best go. man at my wedding, but the worst I ever saw. Not really. <laughs> Just kidding, Dan. That's a song. Anyway. No, Dan, Dan, Dan I've, I've known Dan a long time. Uh, like I was telling you on the phone the other night, I helped Kenny and Jackie move into the house they're in mm -hmm. now. And yeah. I'm going to say that was 87 or 88, somewhere around in there. Yeah. But uh, he's... Mm -hmm. He's 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 a he's a talent. People just don't know, you know, how mm -hmm. skilled some people are. Uh, but you look at that you look at that rascal, you wouldn't have a idea that he could do what he can do. Yeah. And, and for people like me, that work with their hands and move metal and shape mm -hmm. metal, and to watch somebody go over and do it like you're writing a letter, it's it's yeah. pretty amazing. I put together a video that shows some of his work and. Um, and I know I'd seen some of the interviews and, and people are like, you know, so where did you buy this part from? Where did you buy this part from? And he's like, I made it everything yeah. on the car, except for the tire. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's why they're called yeah. fabricator. Yeah. yeah. yeah he it built, is. I don't know how many he built, but he built, he got a lot of molds and stuff from a uh, Ford company and mm -hmm. built quite a few of those GT forties. I think he built seven, seven and he sold one and he kept one and the, and five were, were for Ford. And they, they brought him up there and actually, and he has the plans for it. Castings, Most, everything. Yeah. yeah. Wheel That's castings. That's a big deal there, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's got shelves full of, of stuff for those GT40s. Yeah. He's, now one of them's in the museum down in Mooresville. Because mm -hmm. it was in his garage. I think I opened a door and I look out there and I'm like. What was it, first or second million one? dollar car. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what they charged the insurance. Second one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what they that's what it costs to insure it. How about that? I guess it's about that time, ain't it, Phil? Yeah, I got a fever. I got a fever and the only prescription is more cowbell. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a now normally we'll ask yeah. you what if you have a good Sterling Marlin story, which you may not, yeah. but I'd like to ask you if you got a good Carl Edwards story. Uh you work with Carl a little bit in your tenure over I, at Gibbs? I tell you, I did, I did and and he was doing an interview. And we have this guy that can whistle, and it sounds just like a bottle rocket. Okay. And you can take a piece of plastic <laughs> and slap that on the ground mm -hmm. three or four times, and it sounds like firecrackers going off. Yeah. Well, they had Carl back in the back part of the shop doing an interview, and this was right in the middle of the interview, commercial, whatever it was, as a whole setup, you know. And this guy goes back there and he starts whistling and popping and slapping the ground with that plastic. And Carl actually left the stage. He thought it was actual firecrackers uh. going off. So he actually he actually walked off there for a second till he figured out you know, it was a joke. Yeah. But Carl was uh. Carl was great to work for. He'd come in the shop a lot. He'd come talk to you as a racer, uh, talk to you about the race car. Mm. You know stuff like that, that yeah and that yeah. means a lot to guys that quit going on the road you know yeah yeah he oh yeah always I called came, him ac came across to me as one of the guys that really genuinely appreciated making it to where he had yeah you know mm -hmm. he always talked about sleeping in his car and hand handing his card out to make contacts to get that far so yeah you 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 yeah. worked with him didn't you for i a did while, didn't i you? was his uh first engine builder in the cup series because he had won that truck race and then he went to he took the uh, 99 car when jeff burton left and i was building engines for burton then so then uh they put carl edwards in that car and then you know he was doing decent when he first came into the cup series and we had our uh, we had our uh, championship party 2004 with kurt bush and so i went up to him and said hey i'm building engines for you uh this year so he gave me his phone number and he said here give me a call we'll go to lunch sometime whatever and um so I called him the next year after he, I think he won a race or something, but I was like, Hey, good job. You know, we, maybe we can go to lunch sometime or whatever, but then I kind of lost, lost touch, but he would always give us something for, for Christmas every year yeah. at Christmas time. I mean, obviously, but, me. yeah. uh, it, it, it was, it was tough losing him mm -hmm. because just yeah. we're getting ready to go to Daytona and we've got the cars ready for him. Seats are in it and everything's done. He just had lost the championship mm -hmm. to Jimmy Johnson couple of weeks earlier than that yeah and uh uh we were pumped and ready for another solid season and it was just kind of let the wind out of our sails a little bit oh. uh, to lose him because yeah we we all know he's a great driver and oh, had yeah. a great personality 
Yeah. I think that crash rattled him a little bit. I was mm-hmm. I was right there outside of turn one taking pictures when he wrecked, and I was like 15 feet away when he got out of the car a little bit. Is this is this Homestead? Homestead yeah. yeah, when that car hit him from behind, I have he's photos. Had, he's had some really bad wrecks, you know, yeah. flipping and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, I think, I think he was the one that came down on top. I was working for Ray Everham, and I think he's the one that came down on top of Casey Kane's car. And there were there were mm-hmm. two tire marks on the roof of the car. Yeah, wow. it seems like he left the engine up in the stands too one time, if I'm not mistaken. Well, now uh, his that guy was sitting up there. There's that big wreck at Talladega he had uh, where Brad Kay um, oh, blocked him. Yeah, yeah. And, he went up in the can and, stand. And Carl would have been fine, the... but but Ryan yeah. Newman was coming and was and could had nowhere to go. Yeah, and he just kind of launched Carl back up in the air, and right. that's when he went in the fence. Yeah. So then his and his wife's got she's a was she a brain surgeon or something? She's yeah. a neurologist. She's. she's I'm taking a wild guess that if any NASCAR doctor tried to tell her that everything was okay and it wasn't, she would have said, mm. Well, I, there's always been a lot of rumors stuck yeah. to that whole situation of payoffs and bribes. and Never know. It never happened. It never happened. No. No. He's had too many chances to come back. Um, I think he wanted to be a father yep. and a husband. He'd already... He had already done his time, and people don't know. I mean, you get to a certain point where you you may not get out of racing, but you change what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dale Earnhardt's a prime example. Mm-hmm. Myself, I'm a prime example. I, I quit traveling, but I quit doing pit stops, but I still I'm still employed. Uh, you just kind of reassign yourself, don't you, Eddie? Yeah, you you find you just find a you find a place to make a living, yeah, and and you do what it takes to to do that job. And, and about Carl too, you know, he's you know, all these drivers work out nowadays. You know, you have drivers that do triathlons, uh, very very physically fit. Carl was was one of the oh, yeah. most vi- you know physically fit drivers sure. out there, and and but if you have a if you have a closed head injury, it doesn't mean how. You know, how good, strong you are. It doesn't matter how no. how physically no. fit you are. That that affects you, you know, in a total different way. And he lived his dream. He won a Bush Series championship. I mean, he he you know he attained what he wanted to attain. Yeah. And he he was he became the closest probably that anybody has ever come to winning a championship not doing twice. it twice. He, he was twice. He was, yeah, he t- with he, Tony. Yeah, remember he tied, with Tony? He tied yeah. Tony, and Tony had more wins mm-hmm. that one year. Uh, just yeah. just in the uh, playoffs. That was yeah. one that got away from us. I remember that. But he brought. But he did win a championship for uh, for Ford as well in right. the Bush Series. Yep. Right. So then, you, so you worked for um, well, you worked for Walter. Some you did the rep. Yeah. That yeah. Rep and, uh, yeah. I worked for Daryl and uh, the drive. I was living up in Hickory at that time, and it was taking me an hour and a half drive, and me being shop foreman, I had to open up and close the shop. Yeah, and so it just got a little overwhelming. Yeah, like I said, I was just I was married. My wife had two children uh, from a previous marriage, uh, and it it was just it was just my time. Because he was in Concord, to, to right? Step away. Yeah, it was he was he was over uh, off Hudspeth Road, right there at the yeah, racetrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I found out a, a a place over here with Charlie Presley and Steve Grissom and mm-hmm. Larry Hedrick, and uh, that's when I left Daryl's and went over and done the shop foreman for the forty one car. Yeah. Mike Hill, he mm-hmm. was the general manager, and uh, uh, yeah. that, was, that was a fun deal too. I bet Mike, you mean Mike Hill? That's probably tuned in right now. You talking about Mike? Hello, Mike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's let's right. do supper sometime. Yeah, he's a great guy. Had him in a couple of times. Yeah, he's he's always tuned in on the radio as well, and he'll send me a text from time to time. Something I didn't ask you about though, you you told me the story of how you became the Jack Man for Harry Gant. So we haven't talked any about your pit crew stuff. <clears throat> so when, so how did that become? It was so right now we're going back. It was but. a shock, really. Uh, I had I had done Jack Man for Tommy Houston, and we had a man that gas Ricky Rudd's car named Jim Clinksdale, and. Uh, when Jim couldn't make it to the 
Bush Series racing, I gassed the car, and Philip Sipe would jack the car. But then when Jim would become a gas man, mm-hmm. like we'd race at the same track, meet him, and he could be at the same track with us, then he gassed the car, and I jacked it. Well, we're walking down, Travis Carter and I are walking down Pitt Road, and uh, I asked him, or just told him, if if there's anything during pit stops you need me to do, I'm thinking like pull gas or mm-hmm. roll a tire at somebody or you know, just let me know, you know. And, and uh, I'll never forget, he pooched him lips out to the microphone. He had his headset on. He said, I believe you're going to be my jack man. Now, granted, we're walking down pit road getting ready to start the one, twin 125s on Thursday. Mm-hmm. And I'd never jacked a Harry Gantz <laughs> race car in my life. You That's know. crazy right there. That uh, is. He, yes. <laughs> But I, I had pulled for Harry for so many years. His sponsor was uh, Montclair Furniture on the old 77 car. Mm-hmm. Well, half of my family, that's right in front of my house. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's half of my family worked there. And when I say half of my family, that's 25 people probably. Yeah. You know, so uh, it was just a natural to pull for Harry because of the sponsorship. That's where my mother worked. Yeah. And many of my cousins. And uh, had pulled for Harry and. Then Harry moved up in different series and wasn't racing Hickory as much, so that's when I started pulling for Houston. And that was the, he had the little 95 Schlitz number four, uh, 95 little Schlitz Ford, mm-hmm. Ford Falcon. And uh, I think that little Falcon's what really got me hooked as yeah. far as like, I got to <laughs> do this. I just got to do this. Right. That was there a bad go. car. That it was, was a pretty bad car. That's cool. So how did your pit stop go? Well, uh, after my heart return back <laughs> into my chest sure uh this was back when there was no pit road penalties there's no pit mm-hmm. road speed yeah this was at daytona they're coming in hot uh, very hot yeah they're sliding three or four pit stops they're, they're locked up and uh now were the were the guys still standing out there with the sign at that point yes or did they have the, okay, yeah, the pole? yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they they and that's mm-hmm. that's one thing i did uh pre-race is I would go out there and hold – I was mm-hmm. one of the tallest, so I would go out there and hold the pit board up. Yeah. For, and I did that for Travis for quite a few years, just hold the pit board up for him so the driver could see where we were at yeah. and who we were pitting next to. But uh, – When you run over the wall, I bet you ran behind the pit board guy, didn't you? Yeah. You know, it, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it was something that after the very first pit stop, it was like, Natural. It's like yeah, it's like walking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, it just after I got over the very first one, it it, it come natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, did the adrenaline My. kick in then, Eddie? Could I, you? The adrenaline kicked in when he told me I was going to be the <laughs> Jack Man. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I know yeah. my first my first pit stop was at Daytona as well, and it was the I guess it was the, was it the one twenty fives then or yeah. the one yeah one twenty fives they changed to one fifty Gatorades. So they said, well, okay, we're going to send you down. This was on Thursday. Because uh, Mike Ford had left the year before to go to, to Robert Yates Racing and then eventually went to be a crew chief over there for Denny Hamlin and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But I uh, Mike was a crew chief when yeah. I started there. Okay, yeah. So I had, you know, I kind of had big shoes to fill at that point. So, but I tried and I practiced all the time. I was out there all the time practicing. Anyway, so I get to Daytona and they said, okay, if you get, we're going to fly you down there and see how you do. And if you do good, uh, then we'll send you back for the 500. So I did a pit stop. I remember seeing. To this day, I just t- took a picture of it in my in my head. Kyle Petty coming down pit road. Mm-hmm. So I did a stop, and then like you said, after that, it's kind of like it just flows. Yeah, and so yeah, it, it, yeah. it, it to picking them out when when you see twenty five, thirty, forty cars coming down pit road, mm-hmm. and you got to pick out your front end of your car because you're only allowed back then you were allowed to jump out three okay yeah pit stalls before the car got to you. Mm-hmm. And so you had to pick out your car out of this whole cluster of, you know, you need to know the colors, the front end, what the, you know, sure. shapes are. And, yeah. and, and I, I'll be honest with you, when I went to Quaker State, there was one time that I dove off pit wall when that skull car went by. Mm. Just out of habit. Oh, yeah, just well. out of habit, yeah. And they were kind of similarly colored at that time, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hated when that Green happened. Green and gold. But, yeah. We'd actually go out and put, put the number, put our number on the wall some places you know like darlington whatever on the the outside wall or, yeah so anyway yeah but yeah that was the did they have the lightweight jacks then eddie no yeah still the old shop jacks no, there was the old the old walker jacks uh now 
this is where Ken Thompson come in. He did come in mm -hmm. and bore some holes in the side of it. Mm -hmm. He took the two outer front wheels off and put one round aluminum oh, wheel yeah. in the center. Okay. And which narrowed up the jack yeah. and uh, made it a lot, a lot easier to handle. Yeah. Did you put a handle on the base down there? We had, uh, what we do, we'd wrap uh, four or five grease rags around the end of the handle. Because mm -hmm. when the handles are so long that when you hit the jack, it would bu you bust your knuckles on the asphalt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we put that big ball of rags, and you can look at all the old, old races and stuff. You mm -hmm. set big ball of rags. Yeah. That's just to save the jack man's knuckles. Oh, yeah. Now, there weren't grip yeah. tapes, so we wrapped a rope around the jack handle. Mm -hmm. and wrapped it with duct tape and uh that's where you had to be careful because of uh it'd be very easy for the tire carrier to turn around and throw the tire off oh yeah in the corner of that tire catch that jack and right. yeah. Uh, yeah oh i know i saw yeah. that happen so many times and yep. i'm like i am never letting go of this jack don't, handle don't i didn't ever let go of it until my last year i had to i had to let go because i had to grab the tire off the right rear and roll it to the pit wall but i come right back and grab it and mm -hmm. i never let that jack fall never let the tire hit it anyway but, but I, I can say that now because I'm not doing it anymore. I don't have to knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I don't yeah. think I, – I don't – I go back through all of my years of doing pit stops. I don't really recall ever costing us a, a lap or making mm -hmm. a mistake, letting a jack down too quick and not getting lugs, enough lug nuts yeah. on it. Or uh, It's like you say, you after you do it a time or two, you know you know where to be and when to be there. Yep. Uh, and and – you know, that's the, the, the thing about the, the crew that's over the wall. You know, you, you hear the you hear the crew chief in your in your ear. Yeah. You know, but the, actually the jack man is the one that's, you know, kind of controlling the stop. Yeah, he's like so the quarterback speak. of the team. Yeah, yeah, because right. when he gets to that left side, if you change the four tires, you know, you get to the left side, the, the driver's signal is when, when you drop that jack. And know? a lot of people don't realize this, but, you know, we – we didn't have to be that fast on tires because we had a 22 gallon gas tank and mm. it took 17 to 18 seconds to fill that thing up. Yeah. And there were very few 22 gallon gas tanks on pit road. Most <laughs> yeah. of them were 24, 24 sure. and a half. Yeah. And so the fuel it, line. And it took, it took, <laughs> it took a little, you know, so we didn't have to be in that big a hurry. Yeah. But once they come out with the, the different cans and the, Mm -hmm. one into single pump jacks and the, the jacks that would pump on both up and down strokes and uh that, that the jack the jack pit equipment's come a long way yeah yes. mm -hmm. it's come a long oh way. yeah we could have a whole other show about the the equipment and, the, mm -hmm. and yeah. the doing pickeries but um say hey to uh, michael fatback mcswain hey fatback i know you said you worked with him some i miss you yeah get him up here sometime maybe you know he's down in uh dallas North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. So I rode by his shop many times. I just haven't stopped in to yeah, see him. Yeah, he, uh, he was a lot of fun to work with. It was always practical joke, pulling pranks on each other. Yeah. Gene Need, he was another one. We always enjoyed having a lot of practical jokes mm -hmm. and buckets of water and tubes of grease or <laughs> yeah. packets of ketchup under the toilet seat or something like that. <laughs> That's the thing about racing. There's no shortage of practical jokes. No. And no. I was the one to, always doing something. You had to kind of break that. I mean, it's like it's so intense because everybody's full of adrenaline and trying to win races and working a lot of hours and and you're around them more than you are your own family. Absolutely, they are. They yeah. are. They are your family for the time being. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of times it was like sixteen hour days. Sometimes. Oh yeah. You know yeah. that's a long day. Yeah, when you wreck, yeah. you if you get it to garage area at six o'clock in the morning and. You mess around, you wreck, and the officials will allow you to stay over and mm -hmm. fix your car. And it made for a long day, but we got through it. Yeah. So that was, uh, we kind of answered one of the questions. What was your, uh, do you have a favorite Harry Gantt story? Well, that might not have been your favorite one, but. Uh, I don't know about a favorite story. I don't, I don't really have a story that's a favorite other than he's been my favorite driver i went to see him uh right before covid hit i went to his house uh mm. his truck driver they caught his cb handled bandit his name's gail wilson mm -hmm. uh bandit and i and uh one of bandit's friends steve king we went over to harry's house and 
looked at all his hot rods in his barn and sit there and reminisce for a couple hours and looked at all his trophies and that's cool he allowed me to take pictures of all his trophies and nice. stuff like that and mm-hmm. he's got some hardware yeah i'm sure i know we ran into him at uh taylorsville at the there was a concert it was um marty stewart mm-hmm. and the super, fabulous superlatives and uh harry gant was there so my of course i went and took my wife up to him and and she has said, I'm Kenny Thompson's daughter. So then he's like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Kenny Thompson, he's a master uh, fabricator or whatever, you know. Yeah. So that was cool. We, we saw him nice at guy. the uh, uh, Hickory Speedway reunion yeah. in 2019, mm-hmm. January 2019. It was at GMS right out here in Statesville. And yeah. uh, I don't think the man's changed yeah. over the over the years. Yeah. And, and I saw him, I think I saw him the same year mm-hmm. at the throwback race at Darlington, same way. And it just – he, he's never it's like he's never changed over the years and, and and not not in just appearance either right his personality his, is his, same way. he's su- such a simple man mm-hmm. and uh I've, I've put i've put several times on on different uh, nascar groups that i'm in that out of all the drivers i've seen since i've been in racing I feel like Harry Gant's the most popular driver ever because I cannot find one person to give a negative comment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not one person. Yeah. And that says a lot. Right. Even, even the males. Because <laughs> the, the, no, no, no female is going to give him a bad compliment because they, yeah. they all love him. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah they. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> That's true. All right, so you were at Harry Gant's, and then you were um, at uh, Darrell Waltrip's. Yeah. Left uh, left Daryl's, like I said, I went with uh, uh, Larry Hedricks, and uh, uh, Mike Hill was there with that. He hired me there, and Travis was starting a new team with Daryl Walter in the 66 Kmart car, mm-hmm. and he asked me if I ever had any problems with Daryl because he knew I was shot for him before, and I told him, no, I enjoyed my time there. It was just a trip. That's why I had to leave. Right. And he said, well, I think I'm going to hire Daryl. He said, I want you to be in the shop for me. So we, I don't know if you know where Flintstone Drive is, but we had a shop over here off Flintstone Drive. And uh, um, what was that boy's name that drove at Toyota? Irwin, Kenny Irwin? Yeah. yeah. The Kenny Irwin team. He, okay. bought, he bought after Kenny passed away. He, uh, he bought that race team, and that's what we started uh, – 66 Kmart team out of and eventually six months later he built a shop beside the used to be Winston, front row. Winston's shop it's, yeah it used to be front row mm-hmm. yeah yeah it started out as Winston or Smoking Joe's then I think it went to mm-hmm. Winston and then Kmart come in and yeah and Cal Yarbrough was there at one time too I believe I'm not sure was it Cal uh, I don't think Cal was I don't know Todd Bodine was yeah, yeah. Uh, we had quite a few drivers there at the end we, it, it, Anybody that would drive it, we'd put in it. I mean, mm. Kimmel and Nima Czech and even Hideo Fuchiyami. You remember oh, yeah. him? Oh, From, yeah. Uh, he, he, comes, Japan. he comes and sees me twice a year. Okay. Uh, he's some kind of broadcaster in Japan. Okay. And for the speedway races, he brings yeah. a group of his friends by Joe Gibbs. And mm. obviously, I give him the mega tour. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah he, we're awesome. close personal uh, Facebook friends. I'm going uh, to go do a remote at his place over there. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you were, take me with you. Yeah. yeah when, when you were at, uh, at Daryl's at the 66 car with Travis, was, was Scott Houston the crew chief there for a little while while you were there? Because he was for Daryl for a while. Um, I think that was with – that was Scott. I think he did some – no, because Jeff Hammond was crew chief at 17 car. He may have been for a little bit because we went through several crew chiefs right there. Yeah, because uh, yeah, that's Tommy's other son. <laughs> yeah, right. Oldest son. Oldest. Yep. He was he was the crew chief for Tommy probably at nineteen twenty years old. He was oh, yeah. Tommy's crew chief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Marty Marty and Andy was still in high school. Yeah, because Marty drove for us in that eleven car in two thousand one. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, yeah. So got to know him a little bit, and Tommy would come to the track to. But now, I know the, the chrome car was iconic, the 17 car, but a lot of people don't realize we did run that chrome car as a 66 car a couple yeah. times as well. Yeah, hmm. sure did. But, uh, okay. That wasn't the only chrome car that we've seen. <laughs> we've had a couple of them. Well, they yeah. were like, well, we got Eddie over here now. We can get us our chrome car. Yeah. 
and they did <laughs> <laughs> that's right so um any other stories we need to tell we need to spin the wheel to see who our prize yep, winner is spin the wheel but i also don't want to don't want to uh want to finish your story yeah that's uh that's pretty much the gist yep. of it i i've I've worked for a lot of different drivers and uh, uh, been fortunate enough to uh, still be in it yeah. at my age. I'll be 60 in May. Yeah. And uh, I started in 1979 and uh, still been a part of it. So I've been blessed and uh, uh, I've worked, I worked with some really big Jason Keller and Kenny Wallace and, mm -hmm. Casey Kane and Sadler and Mayfield and uh, yeah, Mark Martin and Michael Waltrip. So I bet does uh, Kenny Wallace give you a hard time every time he sees you? Like, man, you're still here. You're still in the sport. He just laughs. Yeah. <laughs> he just Herman just likes to laugh. Yeah, but he sure. uh, he asks. I don't get to see him much, but uh, when I was working with him, my wife was pregnant with my child, and mm -hmm. he rubbed her on the belly and said there's a little racer in there and so <laughs> yeah. a lot of times when we see each other we refer back to that that night we were eating supper with greg pollux and mm. uh greg greg owned the team and he took us out for christmas and uh, my wife was pregnant and he's rubbed her belly and said is there a little racer in there but yeah i'm not sure if my boy's gonna be a racer right, right. i'm not sure if he's gonna <laughs> He's he's not really much into mechanics, but mm -hmm. he's a big fan an, though. Maybe an engineer. Yeah, he's a big fan, ain't he? That's cool. He is a big fan. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. All right, so then you left there, and um, when it, is that when you went to ended up going to Gibbs? Uh, kind of, but not really. I took on a couple jobs uh, just to help out. Uh, <laughs> boy named Doug Taylor. He had. Uh, Josh Wise down here in Statesville. Uh, I went up there and helped Morgan Shepard. Uh, a friend of mine, Johnny Townsend, he was helping Morgan. Mm -hmm. He needed some help, and I was in between jobs, and it was just something to do, you know? Yeah, sure. Something to do, stay active. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And uh, Dickie Dennis says 60, That's the, and then Phil says that's the new 40. <laughs> that's right. Hey, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we were talking, you just mentioned Morgan Shepard, and I had a thing that came up on my Facebook this morning about a memory. It was 10 years ago last night that Morgan Shepard in Las Vegas caught a robber that had yeah. subdued a robber by yeah. hand in Las Vegas in a parking lot yeah. <laughs> 10 I years ago. That. I remember that. Yep. How about yeah. that? Yeah. That was right before I, that was, that was after I'd left there, but I, I remember that very well. Yeah, it was 10 years ago last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Diabolical. Yeah. Morgan Shepherd. <laughs> Skates. It, yeah. I'm telling you, that man's been, he's traveled many a mile himself. He certainly has. He's still yeah. going on strong. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of, who's, whose birthday was today? It's 80 years old. I Any said guess. that. Dave I said Marcus. Dave Marcus. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Dave Marcus turned eighty today, and that's yeah. that's a milestone. It is. It's something else. I forgot to tell him on the radio this morning. So tomorrow I will be saying happy birthday, Dave Marcus. And <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Happy yeah, birthday, Dave Marcus. Yes. Yeah. All right. So, um, and then you went to Joe Gibbs. Yeah, I went to Joe Gibbs. Uh, uh, there was a man named uh, Kevin Kidd that I had worked with in uh, at Ever or Everham's, yeah. and uh, he put my name in the hat for the final inspector. And so my job was to make sure the car was legal to go through tech. And uh, at that team, at that time, we only had three teams. Uh, uh, Joey Logano was still there, and we had 18 in the 11. And uh, I did the final inspector job for seven years, and when they come out with the LIS system, I really didn't didn't feel comfortable with that. So, uh, and and there were some other guys that were probably more uh, experienced computer wise, mm -hmm. uh, and so I I went back to fabricating. I just was allowed to go back in a fab shop and start building parts again. Yeah, which is what i like to do most so it's kind of like with the uh pit crew stuff you've kind of done everything on pit road and then on the car side just about done everything there as well yeah i can't there's not a part on that race car i hadn't built mm -hmm. uh 
There's not an oil line, a brake line, a brake pedal, a clutch pedal, throttle linkage, seat mounts, oil tank mounts, mm -hmm. rear and coolers. I mean, yeah. Uh, so you're a valuable man. Uh, <laughs> Somebody, anybody needing a valuable man right here? <laughs> I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay where I'm at right now. I got things pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I know. I try, sound like I'm trying to get you in trouble. Nah. <laughs> Coach would you, understand. Hey, you, you already told me you're not. You don't plan on going anywhere. Yes, he's locked in. Yeah, you're in a pretty good spot right now, Eddie. Yeah. Green is Mike Bauer. Mike Bauer. Mike Bauer. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Very good. So we'll get you that prize in the mail. But what you need to do is go on to dhamiam.com. And there will be a little pop-up there. So give me your email address and put in your mailing address in the message box. And, of course, hit send. Send that to me, and I'll get you a prize in the mail as well as a uh, Racing Roots with Ham decal. And you got your decals there, Eddie? Sure do. Yeah, so you'll get, you'll get one of these in the mail. And, and for all you other folks, if you go on there and give me your um, email address and mailing address, I'll send you a decal as well so awesome. and eddie gets his for free for coming in <laughs> that's your payment <laughs> you pay good yes that's right well those are a dollar a piece well, decals yes. I, i've made my living with decals so <laughs> i'm not gonna complain <laughs> well you know uh brett troutman's tuning in with us and he's all he's told me i don't know how many times he was a big daryl walter fan and so he's uh he says tell us a daryl walter story one of my favorite all-time favorites of nascar yes and nice guy and I grew up liking Daryl Walter. He was mine back in the days so of the 88 Gatorade, all the way up through the Pepsi Challenger, the, 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 all the way up through all these cars. I had all of them. I can't really. But the, the, the best stories I have about Daryl are, are away from the racetrack. Sure. Uh, the, every Thursday, he would take us to a place called Granny's Fried Chicken. Hmm. Uh, some of the best Christmas parties would go on the top floor at Speedway, Charlotte Motor Speedway. And uh, I, he had Vince Gill and some guy, some McConley guy, John remember, Conley, John, John Conley, some. Every, every 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 mm -hmm. Christmas party, we would get a great big basket of fruits and hams, and mm -hmm. we'd get a nice cash bonus and a nice, really nice party to bring your family to. Mm -hmm. And Vince Gill sitting over here on an acoustic guitar with his wife and his two, I think, two girls. Yeah. And he's just sitting here singing Christmas carols while we eat supper. I mean, and mm -hmm. just stuff like that Daryl done was so cool. That's cool. Uh, even down to the chrome car and the chrome suit and the chrome jack stands. And yeah, that was, that was a, that, that whole chrome weekend was an adventure. I'm telling you, even hats. We even had hats that were shiny chrome hats. How about that? Wow. Did they ever call you, like, have a nickname for you, like Eddie Chrome or something? No, uh, Travis put one on me. It called me Painter. Yeah. And uh, over at Joe Gibbs, yeah. I was called Big Ed. Okay. And that's, uh, or Big Head, either one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It might have been one or the other. But you said Travis would uh, call everybody by what their job, what they did. Yeah, Travis, right. Travis, Except for I don't know if he just didn't want to learn your name or yeah. or or it's just simpler for him to call you by your job title. But, mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Thompson, he was called fabricator and yeah. I was called a painter and it machinist was called machinist motorman, Harold Pinnell. He's called motorman. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, May mayor, uh, D eight says got to run later. Enjoyed the show. Thank you for tuning in. And, uh, Brett Troutman says, great show. Proud of you, Eddie. Good luck at Joe Gibbs racing this year. And that goes to reminds me of R.D. Ford says, Eddie Yount, he's up in New Hampshire. Uh, thank you for being on Racing Roots with Ham. It's fantastic hearing racing history from the likes that you are doing at it firsthand. So, yeah. And uh, Jim Dooley's up there in Virginia. 60 Rocks. That's what he is, too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dickie Dennis is the infamous fence climber from Richmond in 2014, if you remember that. He climbed the fence, mm -hmm. hung out up there, sure and did. cost y'all the, the race win. No, I'm just kidding. Nah. I don't know about that. No. Nah. <laughs> I'm just quite, waiting on somebody to not say, quite that, that bad, guy, <laughs> if I get Alan Bestwick in here, he's going to he, be like, let's don't talk about him. But he, he, climbed, he climbed the fence, <laughs> and I think that shocked everybody. <laughs> yeah. It shocked uh, us because my wife and I were in the stands. 
Yeah. Just he was right down in front of us. Yeah. Because we went to both races at Richmond that year, mm -hmm. and uh, he's there, and I I'm just watching the race, and I look, and I see this guy on the on the fence, and I, yeah. and he's he's got his legs, you know, <laughs> sp spread <laughs> out toward the fans. Yes. Okay? Yes. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this guy's gonna flip over backwards, and he's gonna go falling down on the track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I'm thinking, you know, I I was I was scared to look. Yeah, yeah. He was an know? old paratrooper or something. Though, yeah. But he, he said he, he threw his hands up because he for, he realized yeah. he left his cell phone. He couldn't get a selfie with the yeah. with, the, <laughs> with, with Harvick going by. I, so uh, when anyway. he when he got back down from the fence, he climbed back down, and uh, boy, he he um, right in the cuffs. Yeah, bless his heart. <laughs> he, no more. No more for you. You'll yeah, go straight was, to jail. Yeah. Straight to jail. <laughs> yes. Paul Rodriguez down in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Good luck, Eddie, in your career. Interesting stories. Thanks, David and Phil, for what you guys do. Thanks, everybody, so much for tuning in. Dickie Dennis has got all the, the laughy faces there. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that's about a wrap. I mean, you got any parting words, how people can get in touch with you. But first, listen, everybody, go back on this video and give me a comment. Tell me what you liked the best story that you liked and uh, any questions that you have for Eddie, I will get him. I will send him the questions and he'll come back on and answer them. I actually uh, sent Chris Boucher one that Chad Hyder had done and he said he was going to come back on and answer it. So my guests do go back on and check <laughs> I out. Just, uh, I just, I guess my parting words is uh, thanks for all the NASCAR fans that make it possible to do what we do. It, uh, there's a lot of TV money in it, but if it wasn't for the heart of the NASCAR fans, I might be shoveling shingles somewhere. Yeah, that that's very true. That's one of the things that and I know when I was working still in NASCAR. Uh, in NASCAR, you have that huge appreciation for your fans. All right. Because if without them, we wouldn't have the jobs that we have. All right. And it doesn't seem to always be that way in all the other racing series is but and everything is so private cool. that they don't really get to see much of the inside behind the workings of it yeah because everything is so secretive now uh, we've even put up uh partitions over our windows because we've seen somebody with a drone flying oh wow. outside our building okay not knowing who they are yeah but there was a drone flying outside the windows taking pictures so we had mm. the screen the windows off the front part of the building how about that that's, that's they really want to know what we're doing they really yeah. want to know apparently yeah. so yes um larry pollard larry pollard he says um tell i think eddie pitted for me at dover in 1988. i did uh harry gant broke his leg at charlotte the week before and larry pollard's harry's son-in-law and uh we didn't pre-fit the car larry's a big man yeah. larry's tall he's six foot four six foot six he's a big man sure is and we didn't scoot the seat back we didn't we didn't so anyway we run great that day we led a lot of laps i'm not sure if we were leading the last lap or not um it's kind of foggy but uh we blew a right front tire mm. and he hit going into three and the car if they called Dover to self cleaning racetrack, well, the car come right off at the end of pit road. Well, instantly I run to him cause I knew he hit hard mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, bless his heart. He was in bad shape mm -hmm. and, uh, I won't say what I saw, but Larry, Larry laid in the hospital and took him a long time to recover. Mm -hmm. But, uh, he's probably one of the most genuine people that, you'll ever meet yeah he's a really great guy i know when i had him on the show a few weeks ago a couple of weeks ago and then uh, matt ashbrenner who was on here last week he said man i watched that show of larry and he said that was great i loved hearing those stories and it was kind of similar to what he did he moved down you know larry comes from you know up and up north in wisconsin and and then uh matt come down from indiana iowa up in that area mm -hmm. so yeah yeah larry's a still the rear gear man yeah <laughs> LP yeah. gears. Yeah. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. He's still, he's still in it. And, uh, so Jody, Jody Lambrook, how you doing? Did y'all hear that? I heard that. I did. Okay, good. I'm not the only one. I did. I heard it. The noise. It sounds like the toilet seat falling down. This is an old historic clock tower building <laughs> here in beautiful downtown Statesville. And speaking of that, thanks to Billy Buck for letting us do this here in the WAME studio. You can check us out every morning from six to 10 on the radio, uh, Billy Buck morning show. And I'll be back here at 6 o'clock in the morning 
as well on uh, WAME Radio on Facebook. And don't forget to check out dhamim.com. And, uh, but thanks again, Larry, so much for coming in. Eddie, I'm sorry. I, was, I had Larry Pollard on my head. Yeah, it's okay. And, and it, towards the end of the show, I started getting this way. It's like, man, I had, I had uh, Bob, Donnie Allison in, and I, yeah. I think I ended up calling him Bobby, but whatever. It happens. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Especially after having uh, four hours of radio in the morning. And then today, today's like my Mondays is my creative day where I spend Darryl, a lot of day. Darryl Walter's famous about. saying is, I don't care what they're saying about me as long as they're saying something about me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so there that's kind of where you go. That's it, yes. But from, yeah. a, from a fan's point of view, David, yes. um, I, I, I personally appreciate this, and I know a lot of other people do, that, that the show that you do, uh, bringing some, some guys like Eddie um, that has been around the sport for a long, long time, um, so they can come on here and tell their story. Uh, I think that's greatly appreciated. I think that's something that's needed in the sport right now. Thank you. And um, um, I, kudos to you for doing that. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. I, I enjoy it. You know, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I really don't have any other reason to, but I, I really love hearing the stories, and that's what I grew up. Um, it's kind of like reliving a lot of them too because you're telling me stuff, and I remember either seeing on TV – or, you know, when I've had different people in, I've been like, I remember that, but or I was you were even seven, there, eight maybe. years old. Yeah, or maybe uh, you were even there. And then later on, I was there, yeah. yeah. But it's kind of like knowing where you where you come from, how I got into the sport. And whenever I got in, I appreciated the guys that were before me. And that's the way I was. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of pioneers that uh, uh, put their mortgage up for their house and, mm-hmm. and, and, and sold everything and raced off of pennies and eat beans. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned Richard have- Brown. You mentioned Richard Brown, man. He, <laughs> yeah. he that's exactly what he did. Yeah. And, and you know, he that's what he wanted to do, and, and he made it happen. And uh, they 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 opened the door for us, and uh, you got to be grateful for that. Yeah, I've, I've fed my family for close to forty years off of this mm-hmm. with a little high school education. We weren't no schools. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody, so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll see y'all next week. I don't have a uh, guest lined up for next week yet, but I'm going to have Natalie Decker is going to be coming in on the 15th. So that'll be pretty neat to get her in here. And uh, But like I said, next week. And and pretty soon, uh, John Dodson, who is uh, the vice president of UTI and NASCAR Tech, and he's the brother of Barry John. Dodson. I know John. Brad. Yeah, I know John, Barry, Brad. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I talked to him yesterday. So he's going to uh, come in soon. Yeah, I'd so. like to see John again. Well, you know what? You're always welcome to come in here. Okay. Any, anytime, every week, uh, come in and hang out with us. And so I'll, I'll send you, uh, I'll forward you uh, who I'm going to have in and stuff. And, good. and speaking of that, uh, you did like my Racing Roots with Ham page on Facebook. That's the easiest way to know what's going on, who I'm going to have in the following week. Yeah, and, like your page. Yeah, and the link and the link to it because I always do an event post to say who's going to be in that week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Well, I, like I say, uh, I'm like Derek. I, I appreciate what you do for us and uh, giving us a, a, a avenue to say where we've been and not really I'm not no Robert Yates but I work beside of him a lot yeah that's you cool know? yeah good stuff yeah so he worked in at home in the Moody back in the day yes too, yes with, uh, that's awesome Tracy's dad Tracy's grandfather worked there um I don't don't hear much about him but Kenny Thompson's dad mm-hmm. worked at home in the Moody I'd like to get get a hold of somebody that actually worked with him and that knows him maybe um Waddell Wilson I've worked with him too. Yeah. yeah. He might. He might. Him and some. both his boys. And yeah. I don't get to see Waddell much as much anymore, but he's still in the business. Yeah. He's still um, building transmissions and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Tracy says, not to mention the long hours they put in every week. Yep. And uh, yeah, for sure. Thank y'all. And uh, Tracy says, we appreciate all of you coming in and telling your wonderful stories. Very yes. well. Yep. Very well. So Derek, Enjoy it. Derek, thanks for coming yeah, in thank too. Thank you. Thank you very and Kiki. much. And uh, so we'll see y'all, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll see y'all next Monday night at 7 o'clock. Good night. If you don't know our host, David Hamm, he's a 25-year NASCAR veteran, engine builder, and jackman.
If you don't know me, my name is Phil Cavalli. I was a 30 year NASCAR photographer. 30 year NASCAR photographer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I'm building engines with a, a Mattel. Yes, Mattel. <laughs> yeah, for Mattel. Lego box. Yeah. Live every Monday evening, we have a new guest from the racing world with their stories, their paths, their, their racing, racing roots. roots. Sponsored by Jersey Cape Yachts. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and their YouTube channel. Also on JerseyCapeYachts.com. Check out Chad Hyder as he pilots the Canadian eMotorsports Network Racing Roots with Ham Ford. 7.30 every Tuesday evening on Facebook. Check out my website, dhamiam.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you'll be notified every time we go live.